Hello and welcome to the ultimate Cubase beginner's guide. This is the first of three parts where I show you the main functions and most important places in Cubase 13 Pro. But don't worry, everything will work on older Cubase versions as well because Cubase 13 hasn't changed much when it comes to the main things. These three parts will help you to understand Cubase and how it's designed a little bit better. There are also video chapters available in case you don't have much time and want to jump quickly to a specific topic. And let me also mention that this video series is not a part of a commercial course or something and I'm not sponsored by Steinberg. So do me a favor and show some support by subscribing. And since I cannot go into detail of each and every setting, please leave a comment if you have any questions so I can make a separate video for you. And now, without further ado, let's open Cubase. And this is the first thing you see, the Cubase Hub. Here you can quickly load one of your recent projects or use the file browser to open a project from anywhere on your computer. There's a variety of pre-made templates that you can use for new projects, but you can also load one of your own project templates or simply an empty project. Set up a default location and project folder or choose a location for every new project individually. Before we start with an empty project, let me mention that the Cubase installation also comes with the Steinberg Download Assistant, where you can check for updates and install bonus stuff. And also the Library Manager. I've made a video about the Library Manager already. You'll find everything you need in the video description. This is what an empty Cubase project looks like. Yours may look a bit different than mine because you can customize Cubase quite a lot. The interface is structured with a bunch of panels that you can open and close with these buttons in the upper right corner. From the left to right there's the channel strip, the inspector, the actual multi-track project panel and the meter panel to the right. The project panel can also be split to show editors and other things. We will look at all the panels closer in the other parts of this tutorial series, but for now, please note that some panels have a multifunctional tap design. For example, the right panel can show you the output meters or the loudness levels. And at the top of the panel there are even more tabs, for example the media tab, where you can find all kinds of files that are connected to Cubase. The editor panel can also show other things. The mix console, for example, which is pretty empty so far. But you can also open the mixer in a separate window by hitting the F3 key. The first thing you want to do is to check the ASIO or ASIO settings to make sure Cubase can send and receive audio signals. Go to Studio, Studio Settings and select the driver of your audio interface. Also go to Studio Audio Connections or hit F4 to see if all input and output channels are connected. In the same Studio menu you also have the VST Plugin Manager that lists all plugins Cubase can find. Check the block list to identify plugins that don't work in your version anymore. In the Plugins Manager you can also apply individual VST2 path settings which can be helpful in some cases. You also want to check the project setup in the project menu for some general settings. And to make Cubase go together with your personal workflow, check the preferences in the edit menu. Yes, I know it's a bit dry and boring to look into all these menus, but the next part, the upcoming parts of this series will be more exciting, I promise. And I also recommend scrolling through all these basic settings and menus when you're new to Cubase because I think that's the best and easiest way to get an idea of what Cubase can do for you. Another very important thing are key commands. The best way to find out key commands is to hover over a button and see if there's something written in brackets. The quantize button here has a Q. The scissors and glue tools are on 3 and 4 by default. Of course you can set up your own key commands as you can see here. Have fun with this enormous list of possibilities. Now I'm coming back to the question why my Cubase looks different than yours. That's because I switched off the things I don't need to see all the time. Make a right click in the empty area here and down here and get rid of clutter. 
And by the way, you can hit F2 to open the transport bar in a separate window. This area at the top is the toolbar. Some of the tools require a more in-depth tutorial, but to give you a few hints, these are global buttons for mute, solo and automation, so you can apply settings to all tracks at once. In the center are the tools you need for editing parts. But you can also open the toolbox with right click and hold in the project window. We will look closer at the tools in part 2. Furthermore, there are settings for the grid and quantization in this area. In the next part of this Cubase beginner's guide, we will finally open an instrument, check out the inspector, some editors and other beautiful things. So I'm looking forward to seeing you again. In the meantime, make some noise in the comments and also please don't forget to leave a like.